We have to love without hypocrisy. We do hate that which is evil. I hate tarot cards, but I do love the person that may be caught up in it to the point where I can actually share with him the truth in love to call him out of it and disciple them. You've undoubtedly seen headlines about Russell Brand and his baptism. And here today to talk with our thoughts about this is our brother in Christ and good friend, Chad Davidson from Good Fight Ministries. He is a youth pastor and an elder at Blessed Hope Chapel in Simi Valley, California. And his brand new book that you're going to want to get, it's so relevant to this discussion, link is in the description below, Wrestling with Discipleship. Brother Chad, thank you for joining me today. Thank you so much, Doreen. This is a passionate uh, topic for me. You and Pastor Joe Schimmel often cover the news, and particularly in view of celebrities, because they're so influential. And Russell Brand is someone who's an influencer, and he came out as someone who said he's being called by Jesus Christ. He said he's being influenced by his Roman Catholic wife, and he got baptized in the Thames River in London on um, April 28th, 2024. I want to also say something that I haven't said this publicly yet. I've been, I was recently baptized on April 21st, 2024. And people might say, what? And it's because the first time I was baptized in February, 2017, it was when I was being called out of the new age, but I wasn't yet saved. And so right after that baptism, I was on social media like Russell Brand is, and I was using cards. You can see right here on the screen, this is me with a Bible and my divination cards together in my videos. During that interim period between February when I was baptized, well, I wasn't baptized, I was dunked because I wasn't saved. And we, we, we know baptism doesn't save, but it's a symbol of our death and resurrection with Christ. And so I wasn't saved. I was being called out and using cards and I wasn't saved until seven months later. And so that's why I got baptized uh, recently because of conviction and discussions with my pastor. Anyway, during that interim period, I, my husband and I, we were trying to find the truth. We hadn't yet read the whole Bible. <clears throat> we were members of a progressive Episcopalian church, which many call Catholic light. So we were being taught to pray to dead saints. We were taught modalism. We were taught ecumenism. We were taught that there's a broad path to heaven for everyone, this woke path, and all these false teachings. And I was also sent by my church to a female Episcopalian priest who was a spiritual director who told me it was fine to keep using cards and use my crystals in a new age way, because she said that was me. And she pointed to her own crystals on her bookshelf. So I was confused. But meanwhile, this is what relates to Russell Brand. Um, I was on social media showing my baptism, using cards, and I was getting hated on and criticized by the Christian community, understandably, but I didn't understand it because why, and this is where you and your book come in and the Great Commission, I needed to be discipled. No, it, it is so true, Doreen, and it is a passion for me because as you're mentioning, specifically, we're talking about a baptism, and you have a situation where Russell Brand posts multiple videos, one of which he, in the midst of all this, right? Hey, I'm getting baptized, so excited. And then guess what? Here's me doing tarot cards. And he asked the question as whether or not Christians should be doing that. And then there's also the post-baptism and the way that he felt and so forth. And so one of the things that needs to be done by Christians, and this is not just in regards to Russell Brand, but I really do believe in regards to anyone that may be searching the faith. This is not just because somebody is a celebrity and they happen to have a lot of followers. And at one point they talked about things that were really disgusting and now you might find things that agree with you. But one of the things that breaks my heart is the fact that when we talk about baptism specifically, it is about discipleship because it is at the end of Matthew that Jesus says, teaching them all I commanded you. And that is in relation to not making converts, but making disciples, teaching them all I commanded you, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And so when we see something like Russell Brand posting these things, not really understanding, and I'm not going to lie, I'm watching this video and I'm seeing somebody talk about getting baptized and then equating it to what Marcus Aurelius talks about 
or equating it to what Buddhists may think about dying to self and so forth. I'm like, no, this is not correct. But what is the job of ultimately the pastor, right? The elders, the teachers, our brothers and sisters in Christ that are supposed to take the word of God that is theonistos, God breathed, and bring forth correction and the training in righteousness so that the man of God may be adequately equipped for every good work. And one of the things that saddens me is instead of expressing that in a way of love and say, hey, this isn't right, I do see a lot of just anger and so forth. And I love that you started this off with your testimony as well, because as you said, I was in an Episcopalian church. I wasn't truly regenerated yet. There was These were things that God was ultimately using. He can use a donkey ultimately to bring us uh, to speak his word into our hearts. But there is a time where God goes before us and calls him to himself. And then there is a day of salvation where we truly give our life to him. And baptism, uh, and, and it, it's interesting because in, in 1 Peter chapter 3, it says baptism saves you. But not it's not the action. It's not the washing of water. But it is a clear conscience towards God in the same way that when you look at Romans chapter 4 and you see the imputation of righteousness that takes place. But the whole context of that is Abraham before his circumcision. And the whole context of that is, was he saved and was the faith credited to him as righteousness before or after that baptism? Now, I have a ton of passion when it comes to baptizing. It is literally my favorite days of the year. When we do baptisms, we do them at the beach. I love them. But I really believe, and especially after watching these, I, I'm I'm just guessing here, uh, but this is a little bit of a guess. He says that his wife is Catholic. Uh, I think the video is still pinned as the recording of this as the number one video on his page is a crucifix of Jesus. And I really do believe this shows a lack of discipleship. And it goes right back to, I believe, priests and Catholics not being a part of the true church of God, but the part of the church of uh, the ecclesia, not the called out ones, but the building of Rome and really what they've uh, pushed out. And what's sad is, is we would love to see him actually discipled in the word. And when he's asking questions about, hey, should Torah, should I should be Torah. Yeah, you should be reading the Torah, but uh, should tarot cards still be in use? Should I be doing this if I'm getting baptized? Uh, Doreen, I think people need to come alongside and actually disciple him and teach him the things that, you know, God's word says in Isaiah, that they're going to these things that meep into mother. They should be going and seeking their God. And I think it's a great time to use this as a lesson of, hey, how can we share the truth with someone and do what Colossians 4 says? Speak with grace as though seasoned with salt. I love eating a good ribeye, but if I oversalt it, my wife will always tell me. And the truth is, is there are plenty of people that they're pretty much just sucking down salt and then maybe a little meat will get to it. And I, I really do believe we need to speak with grace as a season of salt so we will know how to respond to each person. That's such a great analogy. I love that your wife says that because I do the same thing with my ribeye. Too much salt. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so th- th- what you said just, it reminds me so much of what I went through in my early sanctification. Here I was a senior citizen saved at 59 years old after a lifetime of deception. And I was a public figure and people criticizing me. So the new age community was criticizing me, probably are to Russell Brand at the moment, because they don't like the conversion. And then the Christian community was criticizing me. And I kept saying to people in videos, please just tell me what I'm doing wrong unbiblically. I don't want to hear it if it's, it doesn't have to do with the Bible. But if there's something unbiblical I'm doing, just tell me to my face. Don't gossip about me. I need help. And, and then I would get nasty letters from Christians who would say, well, your past, in your past, you did this, in your past, you did that. Well, your work is still for sale, which if it was self-published, I would have taken it off immediately, but it was licensed. It still is, unfortunately, but just people blaming me instead of discipling me. It was so hard. And you know what? This is what happened next. The only Christian community that reached out to me online turned out to be hyper charismatics. And they welcomed me into their soaking prayer circles. And they pointed me to follow Smith Wigglesworth. And oh, wow. I know. And they said, if if the Holy Spirit guides you to kick a baby's head like Smith Wigglesworth, you must obey it. And that's my husband heard that too. And 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 we both said, no, this is not right. So we got 
you know, we stopped talking to them and that now they're mad at me, but I'm just saying, because I got no discipleship from the Christian community, I was left to the wolves for a little bit. And, and this was back when I was following Joyce Meyer and I was following this false prophetess named Jennifer LeClaire. And I was this close to signing up for her prophet school to become a certified, certified in air quotes, Christian prophetess, because I, I was not being discipled at church. I was not being discipled online, but, but God, you know, God led me to some, some faithful, biblically solid brothers and sisters in Christ. And at that moment, I was very unpopular. I was no, in nowhere land. You know, the New Agers didn't want me. The Christians didn't want me. But there was some very brave souls who reached out to me and befriended me and started to disciple me. And then I got into a solid church and went to seminary. And But it was such a slow process, like you said. It was like people wanted me to be this instant theologian after I got baptized. And it doesn't work that way, does it? No, no, it certainly uh, does not. And and I love what you said there about being discipled. And you're like, hey, I'm trying to figure out what's right and, and what's wrong. And and the truth is, is God gives us platforms all over the place. And I remember right after I came to Christ, my platform was the local gym. I was working out and I didn't know everything about Jesus. But guess what? I could go to that place where I was known and I would tell all my friends about Jesus. And it reminds me, of John chapter four, when Jesus goes to the woman at the well. And I love it because in terms of anyone that's not thinking, not ready to, to preach, I got to take these classes to know how to share the gospel or whatever it is. Jesus comes to her, calls her out for her sin. And that's actually what she ends up using. She goes over to Samaria and uh, to that region and goes over to people that are not accepted by the Jews. They have obviously no dealings, as it says in the text. And then you have a situation where she goes, hey, is this not the Christ? Is he? He told me everything I've done in my life. And then it's cool because it gives us a great picture. Sorry, I'm from California. Sometimes I say dude and cool. It, it is what it is. But but it, it's a great picture because she goes and goes and preaches just that simple message. And then Jesus follows up. And it's literally almost what you see in 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Apollos you know, plants a seed, I watered, God causes the growth, or I planted a seed, but Apollos watered, and I, God causes the growth. It was her going out and expressing everything at that time that she knew about Jesus. And then Jesus ultimately comes and they say, we do not believe just because she said, we now believe because you said it. And I think for us as, as believers, when we're thinking about that and the discipleship method, sadly enough, there are so many people online that are so mean-spirited, mean and I really do believe uh, a lot of that has nothing to do with actually how they are in person. Like if you met them at where they fellowship, they probably wouldn't act this way. But for some reason, people put this on and they have this online persona that they can hide behind. And it's not how we deal with people. It's not how we share with the gospel with people on the streets. It's not how when I'm discipling someone or if I'm sharing the gospel or talking with somebody who goes to a neighboring church and they're like, yeah, I just love Bethel and, and Hillsong. Those are some of my favorite songs. I always try to deal with a spirit of gentleness because the goal is always to win them over, to have that repentance where they see, okay, I'm recognizing it's wrong and I want to turn from it. So whether it's Russell Brand or anyone else, man, we should really be slow to type, you know, <laughs> because it. I believe that a lot of people would be really embarrassed, honestly, if Jesus sat there and read out the things that you are writing on a public forum to someone and not bringing correction in love and in truth and trying to share it in a way that is actually going to benefit not only the person, and hopefully they hear it, but also those who are sitting there, right, listening and writing. Because I know if I was, you know, caught up in one of these lies and I go and all I see is ruthless people. And a lot of times that's what it comes out as not, Hey, I'm just letting you know. And, and, and Doreen, I, I saw your comments on their warning about tarot and how, it, oh yeah, you think, oh, I'm getting these information. And really they're from mediums, they're from spirits and they may have. And, and he was talking about how he feels after baptism and, you know, how he feels tranquil and, and so forth. And, I'm like, man, if we could try to express the truth, warn beyond a shadow of a doubt, warn, but warn in the spirit of of love, especially towards the the non-believers, and really putting your putting your laundry out there like that. It, it's it's embarrassing and it's 
and it's not beneficial to anyone ultimately. And we can warn of wicked things while loving people as well, even the ones who were warning. That's so true. And I love how you're you're saying about emphasizing about truth and love, because that's what I needed back then. I, I couldn't hear Christians when it came as a wall of anger toward me. I, I just shut down. And people get into the new age because usually they've been traumatized by something in life and they're very sensitive. And we need, I mean, we, we should not sugarcoat the gospel ever. People need to be offended by the truth. That's clear. Uh, but what we could, I think what you do, what Ray Comfort does, where you share the law and the gospel and really help the person to understand the context of what they're doing in their life and why that's such a grievous sin against our holy God. That was the missing component for me before I got saved. Now, God used the Bible to save me and praise the Lord. Seven months after I was baptized, I saw that I was a grievous sinner because of those cards and mediumship and interpreting omens. I saw that and I repented right then and was saved September 2017. Um, Russell's using cards right now after his baptism. And I yesterday I was on some Christian's Facebook page and he was talking about this and and I just said, you know, I really pray he gets discipled. And this Christian came at me and said, no, he's not saved. He, and, and just kind of, it felt so hard-hearted, Chad. It was, who, who are we to say if someone's not saved or not? I mean, you look at the fruit, of course, but it's, it's God who looks at the heart, not us. And that's not what he needs, our condemnation, is it? He needs discipleship. So my question for you, because I love your book, Wrestling with Discipleship, is how can we disciple a celebrity whose messages are closed? I know some of mine are too, so I get that. But he says he reads his comments, okay? How can we disciple him in comments? How can we pray for him to be discipled? No, I, I love that question because it is something of a passion for me, that discipleship. And you know, maybe my heart, because uh, I've dealt with young people for a long time, I've been a wrestling coach, uh, man, I, I I don't want to keep calculating the years, but you know I'm on my, almost my 16th year uh, as a coach uh, for wrestling, and I've always used that since I came to Christ. I've always used that as the means by which I was sharing the gospel with these young kids because they're getting all these things going on. And what I always love, and for anyone who's done any amount of ministry, you get a lot of really good questions that really, really do. I believe strengthen you because they stretch you and muscles do not get bigger unless you stretch them out. And the truth is, is for me, that's always been the case is I've been stretched by these younger people. And so when I see someone asking those questions, I think a lot of people take it for granted how much knowledge they've gained over the course of their relationship with Christ. And they forget those early questions that they might've had. Maybe tarot card reading isn't something that was a stumbling block to you. Maybe it never was for some people. It was for you, Doreen, right? Like even uh, as, after you got baptized in the Episcopalian church, all of this stuff, then you have it right there taking pictures with your Bible next to it. So are there people absolutely who look at that and go, oh yeah, there's nothing wrong with this. My parents were not saved. They were not Christian, but they were very Republican and they were very afraid, uh, honestly, of divination and and those sorts of tarot cards and and Ouija, Ouija boards and so forth. So they didn't want it anywhere near the house. And I knew that was anathema, even though we weren't saved, I wasn't supposed to do it. So maybe I don't have an inkling towards that. But there are those people that do. And I love Ray Comfort. I was just out a couple of weeks ago sharing the gospel alongside Ray uh, out in Huntington. And I I was saved. Uh, I, I like to say Ray uh, planted a seed and Pastor Joe uh, watered and God caused the growth to bring me to faith. And it was the good person test that brought that out. Mm. And you'll notice that even though he always does kind of the good person test to share the gospel, one of the things that happens is it goes in a number of different ways. So it's not the exact same thing every single time because ultimately the gospel never changes, but the way we communicate it uh, the way that we express it and the things that we may use, just as Jesus can use a coin to tell you to give your whole self to God because you're made in his image versus uh, the Roman emperor and the money that is made in his image. And so we can use all of these things. So when you're out there trying to disciple and tell people what Jesus taught, 
let's actually do that. And let's also be known for our love for our brethren, especially those who may be caught up as Doreen, you said the first people, and, and this is a, a sad but true statement. And I have sat down, I used to meet every week with um, younger people who were in Bible college at that time, and then some of the youth pastors in town. And we would sit down and we'd always come up with different things, different questions. Hey, what do you guys think about this? Theological questions. And it helped me to grow at that time. And one of the things that stuck out to me is one of the pastors said, hey, why when I go to some of these charismania groups that are totally outside of the lines of scripture are not in order whatsoever with what the Bible describes. But when I talk to them, I hang out with them. You can see they have a love. They're loving towards us and, and others and so forth. And they said, and a lot of times, even in my own fellowship, I don't see that. Uh, I'm not seeing that as, as much. And I'm like, man, there, there should never be any sort of doctrine that doesn't lead you to love people more and also be more considerate of your own sin so that when you see someone else that is stumbling, that is maybe not understanding something, that you can remember, oh yeah, I didn't understand that right away. And when you do that, you're actually going to be able to express truth in the way that brings people to Christ and also actually edifies and builds up. So it's kind of this pendulum swing that happens, right? And you, it's not something that, oh, I don't know where I would find that in the scriptures. That's precisely what takes place in the seven churches in the book of Revelation. You have Ephesians, which by the way, find, you know, figured out how to hone in their doctrine, right? They, they, they knew that, hey, I, they tested the deeds of the Nicolaitans, those are false prophets. They saw it and they go, wait a second, we recognize this is evil. And, and Jesus Christ commends them for that. But they forgot their first love. They got away from it. And in the same way, the pendulum on the other side, Thyatira, and when you look at the seven churches in Revelation, only one of them is not a metropolis, and that's Thyatira, because it was a military garrison that was supposed to protect the major cities from anyone coming and attacking them before they went and stole from the big, giant metropolis. But as a military garrison that is supposed to be strong and to stop stuff from coming on, they were the ones who were accepting Jezebel, uh, seemingly in love, like, oh, it's totally fine. And it's like, neither Ephesus nor Thyatira is correct in that. You know, we have to get to a place where we can lovingly correct and do so for what purpose? Even in church discipline, Matthew chapter 18, when you bring church discipline on someone over and over again, it's to win a brother. And two or three witnesses, it's still to win a brother. And even when you send them out, it's kind of interesting because it's right after that in Matthew chapter 18 that Peter is asked specific. He actually, Peter's the one who asked Jesus, how, how much, how much should we forgive? Seven times? And Jesus says 70 times seven. And, he, and then he gives him the parable of the unmerciful servant. So all of that, even I believe the excommunication, just as it was in Corinth, is to bring somebody back when they are in sin, even the point where you're not sitting with someone who claims to be a believer and yet is walking in sin. All of those things are to win our brethren, and we're supposed to do those things in love. And love, by the way, rejoices in the truth. It's And we have to love without hypocrisy. We do hate that which is evil. I hate tarot cards, but I do love the person that may be caught up in it to the point where I can actually share with him the truth in love to call him out of it and disciple them, right? Make, not converts, but make disciples. So, so then, uh, Chad, would we post on Russell Brown's pages and just keep sharing that the gospel on his pages and keep denouncing Tarot and loving on him while we're doing so? Yeah, I think that you can do that. You know, uh, as I said, during I saw your comment. Um, I've written on a number of different, and we have these social media avenues and we do see that sometimes they do respond, mm -hmm. which is great. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, there's a, a young man in the boxing community uh, Ryan Garcia, who's professing oh, yeah. Christ over mm -hmm. and over again, but then, you know, he's, you know, getting engaged with, you know, people that are involved in the adult, I hate calling it that, but, you know, the YouTube algorithms, the adult entertainment industry, and, and he's, you know, smoking weed on camera and all this stuff. And you're like, man, but then he's talking about, you know, we got to follow Jesus. And I'm like, man, I've been responding to him. And, you know, whenever there is a connection, I will try to make it. Uh, and I say that because we live not too far from Hollywood and, um, 
my not just my previous Christian life, but even as I was a younger believer, I was into the MMA scene and some of my uh, some of my guys, you know, trained at wild card boxing and uh, and and so forth out in the out in L.A. So I have a little bit of, uh, you know, I have a few contacts in that community. So I will try to reach out to some of them mm -hmm. privately if the connection is there. I have major Hollywood actors that I've had a chance to share the gospel with. Uh, Dwayne, you might not. You might. I don't know if we told this on a show yet. But uh, we've done a couple things on Kat Von D, uh -huh, and yeah. we did a we did a trip. And I I wanted to express this because I, I hope it, it it explains the heart of Good Fight Ministries. When we went to Philadelphia, we flew into Philadelphia, and funny enough, uh, Pastor Joe, he uh, did, was the only one who didn't bring a check bag. He he had it in his hand. And they said, hey, we're going to check that for you for free. So, of course, they lose his luggage. Oh, so uh, <laughs> his gets lost. So uh, they finally bring it. But we're, we're sitting in a Philadelphia airport for an hour. And what's crazy is uh, Josh, uh, who's one of our editors, and he was uh, he was there with us. He said, hey, I think that's Kat Von D's husband, uh, you know, who, who at you know some points was a professed Luciferian. And I was like, oh, that's interesting. And so he's like, let's let's make sure it's him and it doesn't get weird. You know, but Joe doesn't usually slow down and he just runs right up to him and acts like he knows him. It was really funny, funny interaction. Uh, so Joe can talk to him and he was expressing to him, hey, you got to stop, you know, jumping on one side or the other. You really got to give your life to Christ. You got to stop dancing around because you're going to end up in hell if you continue to do that and don't actually give your life to Christ. And it was such a cool thing because I know how Joe is and I know how I am and the rest of the ministry. We don't do exposés and talk about this stuff because, oh, we want to get really angry. I did enough of that as a Republican, as a non-believer, just listening to Sean Hannity, Rush Limbaugh, and Glenn Beck. But now when I'm expressing something, I want people to actually come to Christ. So yes, I believe leaving correct comments because there are a ton of people, by the way, and and I sh I'm sure you know this, Doreen, that they're reading those comments even more mm -hmm. than they're watching the video because right. they're trying to see what are people saying. Mm -hmm. And so can you come off in a way that says, I can denounce evil while expressing the truth? And if he was reading this, and I think, think of it this way, we have a father in heaven. We know that he, we are his children if you're in Christ, not if you're not in Christ, but that he has created each of us. And we are made in the image of God. And I really do believe if a lot of people would look to the Lord and before they write and say, Lord, this is your somebody that you sent your son to die for. And I want to make sure that if you sent your son to die for this person, that I'm expressing in love a biblical truth to them that is not only just for them, but for anyone else who might hear while they're writing on there, because it can be really dangerous as you've already felt you know, the waves of, you know, the expose video that's on you when you're mm -hmm. first trying to come around to Christ, yeah. or maybe you're already in Christ at some of those and still, oh, but you made this video a long time ago and you might've expressed that and, and felt that. And it it isn't always easy. And imagine if you didn't have Christ, the hope, uh, you know, the the Lord of glory, we, we didn't have him in our hearts living in us and we didn't have people that eventually would come alongside and disciple. It would lead you into maybe the arms of the charismania, uh, maybe into the mm -hmm. arms of another doctrine that isn't true, instead of into the loving arms of Jesus that people are going to point you back to what scripture says. So those comments, I think, can be really important. Reach out, and if there's some way you can connect and you love the Lord and want to see someone else come, try to find that connection, because they do come up sometimes, and you might be surprised who has them. Beautiful. That's so encouraging. Thank you so much, Chad. And we pray for Russell Brand. We pray for his wife and we pray for his fans. And as long as he's using cards or speaking about new age methods, we pray that what he's doing during this time is not a stumbling block to anybody. Let's be really clear. Tarot cards are a divination and the Bible condemns divination in both the Old and the New Testament. You can see the verses on the screen here that condemn clearly that this is not something that God approves of and something that is detestable to him. Chad, I want to thank you so much. And I want to encourage you to read the book that Chad has just published. It's called Wrestling with Discipleship. It's such a wonderful story of his testimony and also very relatable for any of us who can remember wrestling 
with God ourselves and also the importance of discipleship and how we can disciple gives very practical advice, very practical and biblical advice. So thank you, Chad, very much for joining me today. Thank you so much, Doreen. This has been awesome.